All right, everyone. So today we're going to talk about how do you estimate a discount rate in commercial real estate? Let's get started. Mm, well, let's restart. All right, everyone. So today we're going to talk about how do you estimate a discount rate in commercial real estate? Let's get started. So on the agenda for today is really just talking about the various ways in which we can estimate a discount rate in commercial real estate. So I think the first is some people kind of just wake up in the morning and they say, what do I want to earn today? Like what is the percentage rate of return on an annualized rate? What is that percentage rate of return that I want to earn today? Do I want to earn 10%, 15%, 20%? Some investors will just wake up and say, what do I want to earn? That's the number, and they'll make choices. Now, I understand that's got to be like one of the most haphazard way and certainly subjective ways to do it. So let's talk about some of the other maybe more quantitative or supported ways. Fuck. No, let's restart from here again. All right, everyone. So today we're going to talk about how do you estimate a discount rate in commercial real estate? Let's get started. So there's a lot of different ways in which you can estimate a discount rate in commercial real estate. One of them is really just you wake up in the morning and you ask yourself the question, what do I want to earn today? And so you'll typically ask that question represented as an annual percentage. So do I want to earn 10%, 15%, 20% over the next handful of years as an investor? What do I want to earn as a percentage? Now, as you can understand, that's a very haphazard way. It's like licking your finger and seeing which way the wind blows, right? It, trying to estimate your discount rate this way while relying on your gut is oftentimes the preferred method for a lot of investors. I think if that's the only way, you're probably setting yourself up for failure. So let's explore some of the other options that are available to you. So the next is what some investors call the bottom up approach. And that's where you take a risk free rate and you add risk premiums to it. So let's take a look at a quick example. Let's say you define the risk free rate as the 10 year treasury. So whatever the 10 year treasury happens to be yielding at any given point in time, that's the starting point. And then you'll add all of these other risk premiums, every conceivable risk premium. Let's add them to that baseline rate. So if, for example, you think the market has a risk premium of 3% or because of the physical condition of the property, it should be assigned a premium of 2% and so on, you'll continue to build up to arrive at your total discount rate based on the rate of return, the compensation you should receive for taking on each one of these individual compartmentalized portions of risk. The problem with this approach, however, is how do you estimate each one of these different premiums? So if it's 2% premium for physical risk, why is it two and not one and a half? What are the correct premiums to add? These are so uncomfortable for a lot of investors to add because I don't think that there's a good way to answer them. And there's certainly only challenging ways to help support why you answered them the way you did. So if we kind of move on, then, then what's the next alternative if that one's so difficult? So the next is the weighted average cost of capital. So this is straight out of most finance textbooks where we'll say, let's figure out the proportion of debt relative to the proportion of equity and the cost of each. So let's say the loan to value represents the proportion or weighting of debt and the interest rate is the cost of that debt. Now everything that's left is how much equity we need to contribute and then the cost of equity, the investors required returns as the cost of equity. So just to put some numbers to this, if it's, a, let's say, a 65% LTV at a 5% interest rate, 
and your investors require 20% return on the balance of the capital, then we could estimate approximately that the weighted average cost of capital, in this case, the discount rate is 10 and a quarter percent. Now, the challenge, if you can dig deeper here is, all right, great, but how do you help estimate the investor's required cost of capital or the, re the required investor return if they don't tell you explicitly? And now we're back to square one. We're here trying to estimate what that discount rate is, what that required rate of return could be. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. All right, fine. So how about we move on to another approach then? This one's kind of thought of as the top-down approach. And this one's a lot more simple. And, and I think given its simplicity gets, gets a lot of credit and tends to be the starting point for a lot of investors. Where we'll say, what is the going in cap rate for the investment or in general for the market? And then what is the anticipated appreciation or growth? Now, whether that's lease escalation growth rates or whether that's property appreciation growth rates or the combination of the two, we'll add that growth to the going in cap. And so in this example, we're looking at about a 9% discount rate. It's the sum of these two, the yield today as represented by the cap rate plus the appreciation of the yield tomorrow that we could earn. Now, what I think is interesting is if none of these really work for you, then what's next? And this is where you can rely on the survey approach, where you say, let's take a look at what every other investor is doing as they evaluate every investment opportunity in the marketplace. So if investor one looks at option A, B, C, and D and says, you know what, given based given my understanding of what's happening in the market, what's happening with the tenants, what's happening with the properties, I think my minimum requirement is 10%. And if investor two does the same thing, and if investor three does the same thing, and investor 100 does the same thing, and you survey them, and you take an average, then you can begin to get a pulse on the market, a sense of what the market is demanding, is requiring. And you can use that survey again as a benchmark. There are a lot of different places in which you can get some of this information. Some of these household name reports, I think, are some. And this is really what the, the output of these, of these reports look like, where you'll say a certain property type within a certain geography or market, what is the range and the average discount rate for it? So overall, I think I'm giving you a non-answer, right? I think there's a lot of different ways for you to estimate what the discount rate could be. There are more complicated ones, more detailed ones, more subjective ones. Those that rely on third-party information like comparable surveys or those that rely entirely on what you want based on what you want to earn. I think the truth is you probably find yourself using a combination of all of them to help estimate what yours should be. So just to recap, I think there's five different ways, four really, if you take out the most subjective one, whatever you want to earn method. But I think there's five different ways for you to help estimate what the discount rate is once you do then the fun starts because you begin to apply it within the marketplace. So while that's another video, I hope this one's helpful in helping you understand kind of how you can estimate a discount rate so you can make investment choices. Thanks, everyone. I'll talk to you soon.